guys and welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven and we're going to see RDU versus Pavel. So we already see Druid versus Warrior. What can you tell me about this matchup, Raven? Yeah, it's going to be a, a, an interesting one. It looks like RDU is going to be playing the Patron Warriors. So similar to what we saw from ECOP in the previous set. And Pavel bringing pretty standard Druid. Um, the Blue Order coming down early on, good for Cycle, but overall in the matchup, it's kind of rough. Druid really struggles to deal with Patron, and uh, really needs uh, tools like, say, Wrath, uh, Keeper of the Grove, and things like that to be able to get rid of them. Um, but normally doesn't have the mana to by the time turn 5 hits, and uh, either you can potentially drop those Patron on the board. So, really difficult, but there's always a chance that the Druid can do Druid things, and just chain drop big minions that the Warrior can't deal with, and then just combos the uh, the Patron Warrior down. So, it can go either way, but I think the Patron Warrior normally feels okay about this matchup. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think this is one of the the matchups that you want to have as Patron Warrior, but we already see that Pavel is, is putting himself in a great position, dealing with that Acolyte of Pain and uh, running with the first Druid of the Claw. He has the second one in hand, and he has a pretty good follow-up overall. Yeah, there's a, a lot of pressure, and this is what I was saying earlier about being able to, if you can just stack the big minions one after the other, and the warrior doesn't quite have like the fast enough removal to keep up with that, then it gets really difficult, and already we're on turn 5 for RDU, and he hasn't, he, he cannot speak can't spawn patrons at all so and the second you think oh you know he's got sludge belcher i guess which is okay but sludge belcher doesn't actually do too much against this board especially when the druid's going to follow up with their own turn five yeah absolutely so uh is there is there a way for RDU to win like actually just getting rid of those minions right mostly there is no savagery yet for pavel but we have so many turns yeah, and the thing is, the two are like, we've seen a lot of this in Druid recently, where a lot of Druids are running double as your Drake now. Um, and that just, the, the consistent cycle, I mean, he can Druid with the Claw now, he can just go as your Drake and uh, push through. Probably unlikely now that the Belcher has come down, he probably wants to deal with that pretty uh, pretty swiftly. But there's there's so much cycle that, you know, the Druid's going to get there into in terms of drawing the combo pretty quick in this game. And uh, there's not a lot that you can actually do about it with double battle rage as well, and just clogging up the hand. He isn't even damaged himself, so he's not even going to draw any cards at this moment in time. Yeah, that's absolutely absolutely true. And uh, let's talk about the players a bit. So RDU uh, from from G two, he he had a, per, a great year. Two thousand fourteen, two thousand fifteen was okay for him. He did win Insomnia um, in December, and uh, mostly when you look at his wins and his tournament performance, he's ending up in the finals. He mostly goes to the finals, and then in the finals takes either first place or loses. But mostly he wins those tournaments. Yeah, I think um, uh, you know, I think everyone first remembers RDU from DreamHack uh, a couple of years ago, when you know that was probably his biggest breakout performance. And since then, he's been one of the most consistent players that's been sort of sat at the top uh, almost since you know that that Hearthstone uh, really started up. So RDU is really, really strong. Like I said, most recently when I tournament in December in the in the UK that we were at. And then on the other hand, Pavel, probably most known for his uh, last year's World Championship run that he managed. Yeah, I think like both Pavel and RDU, they are really consistent ladder players and they are fighting for the first spots. Uh, Pavel also went to US uh, and he was playing in the Geico tournament. So, um, uh, like, well, he's he's young and he's already performing great. And here again in the Invitational tournament, but uh, showing his skills. So I'm really interested to see uh, who is going to, to win this match. Yeah, and how do you then just clearing up uh, like a good chunk of the board? The belch is there. Belch is still there now, and um, the Druid the Claw does some work, and even the Living Roots as the uh, is buffed, so he can just choose to hold on to it or clear off the one two. Kind of rough to sort of commit to killing the one two here. Uh, purely because like living roots is pretty nice at killing off you know the patrons that are on the two health or the one health mark. Uh, so just nice one mana kill off a patron is normally pretty reasonable. All right, there is a Savage Roar for Pavel. Uh, this is not the Savage Roar turn yet. So what's the best play? There is the Big M Hunter for the Dr. Boom. And, uh, well, uh, Shredder. Yeah, Shredder BGH looks really good. The board's uh, fairly sticky with the, the bombs. Can, the bombs could clear up a lot of this, but they could also whiff pretty hard. And suddenly there's a there's a hell of a lot of damage represented on the board. And even just Savage Roar could look like you know pretty threatening. Yeah, so where are the bombs going to go? Oh, that was a nice good. bomb. 
It's okay. so awkward that he's like RDU is sitting on double battle rage and he basically has no targets. Like if you go for Acolyte, like you can patron and inner rage, you get two minions on board, and then maybe battle rage to draw one card. So you can you fight back a bit. But if you go for that, you're losing your patrons. So Oh man, it's tough. Yeah, this is definitely rough. He's actually just gonna play a patron. I think the problem is if you in a rage you, you really need to wait for the big turn in a rage is going to make more of an impact than drawing a card. Uh, just drawing a singular card. So that's a little, a little bit rough for you there. He's holding on to inner rage and double battle rage and just presenting some threats on the board that, to be fair, Pavel does have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. You have to deal with the patron for sure. And uh, even with Acolyte, you, if you leave it, uh, you are expecting something like a Taskmaster or just Whirlwind or maybe even Ghoul that you cannot deal with. So you want to kill it as fast as possible. You're still, uh, being Pavel, you're still pretty happy about the situation where you're ahead on board and you're getting closer and closer to the uh, to the combo range. And uh, we are thinking combo is 14 points of damage, but if you actually have minions on board, it's even more. So uh, Dr. Bull might be uh, there next turn. For RDU though, what do you think? Uh, yeah, it's looking good now. <laughs> now that he's got the Death Spite, the key card in the... Uh in the deck that uh, obviously along with patron it means that this frothing berserker has to get answered um and next turn he can create those grim patrons like uh, and you know like the perfect line that you normally want to drop on turn five and it does look okay for power though especially with an innovate now um hmm how does he want to play this? Because the Frothing Berserker is always a threat, and especially because that Dread Corsair has come down. It's going to make it really awkward to deal with, but whenever you use a Wrath on something that isn't a patron, it never feels too great, because we've already seen one Living Roots gone, and now if we see a Wrath on something to kill that off, it's going to be a little bit rough for Pavel to deal with the patrons, but he could be in the mindset that he builds the board up so much that by the time the patrons actually make a big enough impact on the game, he can end it with combo. Well, there is another thing. Um, if uh, you, You've seen one patron actually gone, and uh, if the patrons explode this turn, and you're expecting them to, to do, you have the combo. So you can also just uh, try to exhaust the resources of Warrior and kill all the patrons with the combo. And uh, with so many cards in hand, you can play the longer game, you're fine. Yeah, I mean, Pavel's hand is huge as well, and, and you've already seen a Battle Rage from RDU, and it wasn't really the biggest Battle Rage ever, either. So you know that, you know, he's not dug too deep into the deck. This is going to see the, um, the the pretty straightforward Patron turn, and even the Ghoul actually deals with the 5-2 Ancient of Law pretty this well. Is a, this is a crazy turn for Patron. Just getting uh, so many minions and so many cards back. This and... Battle Rage, ugh, crazy. Let's see what he draws. He got a Whirlwind and an Inner Rage, so more options. Yeah, Whirlwind's actually going to be worthwhile here. It does kill off your 5-1 Patron, but overall it creates a stronger board. And it means that the Druid has to either run a minion into that ghoul or hero power. And again, as we've mentioned previously, like, forcing your opponent, although it looks like an E... Well, yeah, it's just a hero power and it's dead. Like, that's two mana of your opponent's turn, so suddenly the turn overall is a lot weaker, and the ghoul only really, you know, the, the, the proc only really helps RDU in terms of the, the board. So now the question is, is there a, a nice clear using the fact that the board is is full at the moment? So can... Oh, that, that's an interesting play. So let's see, if you um, use Living Roots on one of the free frees, it goes to free one, and then you have Still a couple of annoying cards. Yeah. It's a tough one. That that play, though, was really interesting from RDU. Just because he didn't need to fill the board, and now it means that the ghoul, like, does, doesn't create as many patrons, right? Yeah, exactly. So he could have created two 3-3s three, instead of one, I believe. So this means that Pavel might have a way to clear the board uh, with... Um... Yeah, that's, that's a yeah, full clear. Yeah, he can innovate out of power. That's perfect for Pavel. He did. Yeah, it feels, just feels kind of weird from RDU. I mean, you know, I don't know if I'm missing anything, but... Oh, no, he leaves the 3-1 up. Okay. But the um, that seems really nice for Pavel. He still has Boom. He has his Drake. Still has a Wrath. He probably just wants something along the lines of a BGH to deal with the Grom, but RDU's actually used both Inner Rages now, so the Grom Inner Rage is normally something that you can just surprise your opponent with and just do 12 damage out of nowhere. Um, and it still only cost 8 mana, so that's pretty nice, but I think I'd use used both now, so... Yeah, well, he still has a, a Whirlwind, but even even so, if you get a Grom, 
Uh, there is a there is a silence, and uh, Grom is dealing what ten to twelve damage, depending on what happens. So Pavel is in a very good shape. Uh, there is uh, he Bradyu is is drawing two cards at least because he has that uh, loot hoarder, and he has a, a way to deal with uh, Doctor Boom. But uh, I will have to say that Pavel is in a great position. Yeah, this is looking really good purely because of I mean the card advantage he had early on. Um, is just proving to just be so important in this game. He had the answers when he needed them, and now he's got like follow up. Like, yeah, okay, RDU is going to clear off these bombs next turn and do some do some extra damage. But Pavel can now just drop Shredder in Drake, you know, like whatever the hell he wants, and the bombs are still going to do damage. And already he's got another combo. Yeah. So next turn's going to look really rough for RDU unless he pulls something insane out of the bag. That escalated pretty quickly. So let's see if RDU <laughs> can actually find a way. Maybe a couple too many weapons in his hand at the moment. What do you think about getting it, fire, fire War X last turn instead of um, Death's Bite and going through phase with Fire War X and then hoping that maybe uh, you will get Grom after that so you try to pull your opponent lethal, but uh, it was a really far-fetched thing and uh, and I don't think it will work. work yeah, it's a, definitely a rough one there and I think it was just uh, the lack of being able to drop those patrons quite early enough gave Pavel enough time to sort of collect all the answers he needed to deal with the board and then um, be in a rage at the end to fill the board to make the ghoul a little bit uh, a little bit worse for IDU, I think, uh, and then make it just a little bit easier for Pavel to clear. So Pavel do, starting this series pretty well, 1-0 up versus RDU. Yeah, but uh, Patreon is a deck that can win versus other decks, and let's quickly uh, check the lineups. So, Pavel, he also has a Mage and a Warlock. This is the Warlock that he brought versus um, Rogue from RDU. So we're again going to see Rogue, and the last deck for RDU is Druid as well. Yeah, and this already looks like from Pavel that it could well be Arena Warlock, which is something we're not seeing too often. Yesterday and a bit earlier this evening, we were talking about the power of Sue in terms of Warlock, and Reno Lock sort of became really, really popular quite quickly after League of Explorers, but very recently has just died off just a little bit. But Pavel, I guess he likes Reno Lock and doesn't, you know, thinks it's uh, better in this tournament than Zoo. So we'll see how that actually performs for him. Well, absolutely. You know, when I when I'm thinking about Pavel as a player, like what 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 is his signature deck? He was always playing Handlock. Like he was playing a yeah. lot of Handlock and and Control Priest as well. So he was climbing first. I think he was climbing to the first place on ladder with the Priest, and then he switched to to Demon Lock. So I I think like the the Reno Lock is a good fit for him as a player. Yeah, and in terms of this matchup. I think the trick for RDU is going to try and draw as many cards as possible and have the burst potential in hand and the board uh, control that even if Reno comes down, he's threatening so much damage straight afterwards that Reno, of course it will make an impact, but not a big enough impact to win the game. Yeah. Whereas Pavel, because we saw a Molten Giant, this looks like this uh, slightly slower. Um, Reno Lock that doesn't run, say, like Leroy Faceless Power Overwhelming combo. Are you sure, uh, though? This, this Molten, like, you can still play Molten Giant in the in the Leroy version. I think, like, Molten... Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's always a lot of flexibility, isn't there? Yeah. I guess. I think the, the I... most of the, the, the biggest difference is that you, you either run the combo, which is Leroy, PO, Arcing, uh, or, like, Faceless, or you do run the Stalag and Fugin. Yeah. Or Pavel could just be running something completely different. We might, <laughs> yeah. see, some, we might see Nazdor move. It's a toolbox deck. It can, it yeah. can actually be anything. Yeah, he might play Nazdormu to prep if he faces Live Coach in the future in this tournament. So, But I, I do agree. Yeah, that would be an interesting one. It, it's a, an interesting match because um, on, on, on one side, RDU has to play a Druid game where you want to have the combo. On the other hand, Pavel just uh, needs to sustain and kill whatever he wants. So um, the game plan versus Rogue doesn't change much as uh, playing versus Rogue uh, goes. So just killing all the minions you can and putting yourself in a position where you are outside of the combo range and the rogue just doesn't have any minions on board. Yeah, exactly. And Doomsay is an interesting card. Not a common pick in Reno Luck, uh, from my experience at least. Yeah, yeah, I because agree. Because you, you can't normally... It's not like Freeze Mage where you can almost guarantee like a Doomsay with Frost Nova. So like Doomsay is just one of those cards that I guess you just throw on and just either say, well, it heals me for seven 
all you know get some like awkward card from the opponent like a sap or an iron beak owl or something to silence it so then you know like it requires an answer so pretty interesting to see pavel play it maybe we'll see some more uh, interesting tech choices but already having thorison down on on a board that contains uh, or a hand sorry that contains lothab heelbot and reno it's probably feeling pretty good versus this rogue yeah I, i've I really like the Doomsayer, by the way, because um, it got popular with the, the Murloc Paladin as well, but uh, more or less there is a couple of decks in the metagame right now, as we've seen yesterday as well, that require a setup. So like, Zul requires a setup, Shaman requires a setup, and if you can counter that, that early setup with a Doomsayer, and just buy yourself a turn or two and, and destroy everything on board, that's a, a really good deal. So I like inclusion of, of one. Yeah, and we just seen uh, the the commitment you have to make in terms of killing an emperor. Um, when he, how do you ask to hit blade flurry for one and then run the belcher in anyway? Because you just can't afford to leave up a card like that, especially uh, when it's in a deck like this or a deck like Freeze Mage. The potential uh, for for insane combo damage is so high, and we do see Pavel running a faceless. So you're completely right. This does look like some form of burst combo uh, arena lock. I think it's really good to have the burst combo in the deck because instead of just going for the sustain and try to survive at all costs, you always have this um, extra strategy in your sleeve that you can use. And a lot of opponents will, will actually take damage. Uh, cla weapon classes like Rogue, Warrior, they, they will ignore the fact that you can deal damage back because you're the one who's trying to, to defend yourself. And you have that extra burst as well because you're running Hellfire, you're running Dark Bomb. Uh, maybe soul fire as well so that that is some damage that you can deal with one uh, in one big turn yeah and something to think about is like if, if you look at the board now next turn pavel could deal 20 damage potentially because he's played emperor he could have had faceless leroy power of alarming in hand yeah so like the, from turn eight you know either you've got to be thinking he did play emperor and his hand size is pretty you know <laughs> reasonable like please no and it's like the druid effect right yeah you suddenly have to start thinking Right, I probably need to have this at least in mind at this point. And maybe as every turn the game goes on, it's going to become more and more likely that there's some bursts coming. So maybe to play a little bit awkwardly for either you here. But can you really play around that? I, I think like you can assume that he, he has a combo, but you cannot play around that combo really. Like if you want to win the game, you cannot get par paranoid. And uh, I think the fact that you actually have the combo in deck and, and players are aware that you can burst them down is, is a big advantage because then they will maybe try to be a bit more defensive, you know, have that one more taunt or maybe a specific health threshold just in case. Yeah, I think in, instead of like fully playing around something like that, I think the, the value is them just slightly, you know, okay, well, here's a trade I maybe wouldn't have done if I was feeling a bit more aggressive, but if I don't trade, then it might bite me in the next turn if he has some more burst, you know? So it's just that slight, you know, just different play style, that, you know, representing a combo might uh, might force from the opponent. Yeah. So it looks like Pavel's in such a good position, though. I mean, RDU does have a lot, uh, quite a large hand and potential for some combo, but there's no prep in there yet. So there's no chance of anything truly crazy coming out from the Rogue at this moment in time. Well, he does have the Tinker, but after Reno Jackson, uh, the win is slipping away for sure. Yeah, and even cards like Twilight Drake in Pavel's hand, it's still going to be big enough with this, with this hand size to, to be a reasonable threat. And like, there's so many like bombs in a Reno lock that sapping a Twilight Drake feels bad, but then trying to kill it feels even worse because you just, Rogue can't normally commit to that much damage on one target. Yeah, that's true. And RDU is getting lower and lower, uh, going down to 8. Oh, Armorsmith, just what Arena Luck wanted. <laughs> More hell. RDU takes care of that pretty fast. Uh, but he was able to clear the board even though he is at 8. He now has a minion. And uh, he has a loft up as a follow up. So let's see what Pavel gets. Pavel gets some good minions this turn. Yeah, and already just playing super safe, but two minions on the board. And again, like. If the Twilight Drake eats a sap, fine. He probably just follows up with Twilight Drake Sylvanas next turn. And it's like, well, you, you only have one more sap left. You've got to pick one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And now for RDU, this is a test of uh, how much damage can I can I deal in two turns. So trying to clear and sap the Twilight Drake, uh, then uh, he will not have enough um, mana for a weapon. So he will... Um, can you play Lothab this turn, or do you want to play Lothab next turn? Oh no, he's preparing the weapon for the Tinkers. Yeah. 
I think this is pretty nice, actually. Because he, he has sat Tinker next to him, right? Yeah, or Tinker Lothar, depending on what is going to happen. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So this is... Uh, and he's finally got a prep as well, so... He can... what's He can actually prep, sprint, sap Tinker, right? Yeah. If he wants to, of course. He might not want to do that play, but he has the mana to if he feels like he needs to draw some more cards. I right. guess sap into Sylvanas and uh, drop the Lothar feels a little bit safer for either you now and just try, try and go probably just a bit all in on this damage and say this is the moment I either kill him next turn or, or I don't, you know, oh that's probably game if he can stabilize. It's definitely a lot of, uh, it represented a lot of damage on the board in terms of minions and the Lothar actually cuts out one of the uh, sort of emergency buttons for the, uh, for the twisting nether but when your opponent's got Arcane Golem faceless, then there you go. <laughs> it, it that's, works. All, that, that's also lethal, so it's, it's pretty combo. nice. Yeah, it, it, it works when it does enough damage to kill your opponent. So, yeah, not so, too shabby. A, a very interesting build of the Reno Lock from Pavel uh, with uh, with some burst, with uh, Doomsayer, uh, with uh, heals as well. And uh, it worked really well versus RDU, just uh, stopping the damage there, having the Reno on important turn. And, uh, you know, like when you play Reno Lock, you really want to have Reno in opening hand and, and play it uh, on turn 6 or 7 to get the value in health. And the bubble did have that, so now we are going yeah. to, to see... I think, yeah. Sorry, I think what was really good about that is that he got Reno down on a turn that was relatively safe. Like, the, the Rogue didn't have, like, three minions on the board. You play Reno, it just dies, and, you know, like, and then that's it, and then you've got to catch up again. He, he did, uh, you know, play that on a turn that was fairly good for him, which is pretty key in most Reno decks. Yeah, that's absolutely true. All right, and now we are going to see the Freeze Mage versus Patron Warrior. So, Freeze Mage versus Patron Warrior. Raven, what do you think about this matchup? Uh, so, all th so this isn't as rough for Freeze Mage as Control Warrior is, because there aren't cards like uh, Justicar True Heart, Shield Block, Shield Maidens that really stack up a lot of armor, because the Warrior in this matchup definitely wants to just out-health the, the mage, freeze mage can do a finite amount of damage unless you include unlimited Antonidas fireballs, but that's not realistically going to happen. Um, so what will happen here is RDU will probably just sort of play on curve, never overcommit to the board, and that armor smith in hand is probably going to be saved till later to play like armor smith and then the big patron board to then whirlwind into so much armor that the freeze mage does have a have a you know real hard time to try and burst through that kind of health. But it is possible for the Freeze Mage, if you get a quick enough start, we can see the Emperor's already there. He does have Frost Nova Doomsayer as well, which is a good answer to Armsmith because it doesn't actually do any damage to the minions when Doomsayer kills them, it just wipes the board. So, you know, it's it's still rough, but it's not undoable. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's an interesting matchup that most of the time you have to consider fatigue because this is where, where it mostly ends. Uh, I don't see games where Patron is just rushing Freeze Mage and Freeze Mage has nothing, especially with so many cards in hand already. So at some point, players will be forced to play cards, and you cannot play cards like Acolyte of Pain, because they are already thinking about fatigue at this point. Yeah, and the thing is as well, like because you neither uh, player really expends a lot of cards uh, throughout at least the early stage of the matchup, you don't need to draw cards because you're not using cards. So as you quite quite rightly said, Nims, you don't really need to play Acolytes of Pain. And for example, for the uh, Mage, he may not want to play uh, Arcane Intellects as well, but it's probably a bit more reliant on the Mage at this point, because although Pavel does have um, a lot of good cards in terms of AoE, um, RDU has the potential to just create a massive board because he already has Whirlwind, Patrons, and an Armorsmith. Yeah, that's true, but um, is there, an there is an Execute as well, okay, so he can Execute Thorison. Um, Pavel, though, he has double Blizzard. Yeah, is that going to be... So, let me think. I'm working out whether that clears because of the Patron board being full. If he plays Blizzard this turn and Blizzard the next turn, but instead, after just seeing an Execute, why not play the Doomsday, right? Yeah, that's true, exactly. Okay, so... Nice turn for Pavel with that uh, Frost Nova Doomsayer. Yeah, you don't normally see patron players commit to patrons like this, but I think because RDU still has patron whirlwind armsmith in his hand, and he kind of needed to proc and execute on Thorison somehow, then like just throwing them on the board, and you know there are games where Freeze Mage doesn't draw answers to this kind of board 
So, you know, it's worth it because then you can push extra damage without really being punished too hard. Yeah, that's true. But also, like, just spending cards from your hand, like, those cards were not that needed. Like, you really needed to deal with the Taurison, as you mentioned. So, you can throw those away and, and just try to, to collect the cards that you need. So, more, uh, like, a Death's Bite for another Warwind effect, the second Armor Smith, and then go with the Grim Page in turn. Yeah. Okay. I was so. just deciding whether he plays Frostnova or Blizzard here, I guess. He's going to ping one of the patrons, right? Oh, no, okay. I didn't know whether he wanted to ping the patron first and then play Frostnova, build the board up in case there's a second execute, so then Blizzard has a bit of a stronger effect on the more full board of the patrons. Well, if you Blizzard, are the, the new patrons frozen as well? Maybe. <laughs> exactly, I, if if they right? work like in Gang Boss, then yes. Um, if they don't, then no. <laughs> yeah, then absolutely you do not cast Blizzard there. I'm not sure, actually. I haven't played that much Freeze Mage versus Patreon. No, same. But so this is something you have to know as a pro player, and uh, Pablo made a decision and, and got with the Frost Nova. So, guys, in the chat, you can always tell us uh, what's going... What is the, the effect there? So, RDU, you, you, Acolyte of Pain, you actually might slam Acolyte of Pain. Because it's got it's just going to sit in your hand, so you can uh, you can throw it away. You don't need it. If you go yeah. for Acolyte of Pain, unless you really feel like you need the cards. But if you're thinking about fatigue, if Acolyte of Pain just sits in your hand, you will never be able to play it. It's it's representing too much damage. Yeah, I think the only reason I can think of like keeping hold of it is because you are gonna whirlwind at some point, and because RDU doesn't have Death's Bite yet, you might want to just say, okay, you know, fatigue is a very realistic outcome of this game. But Death Bite, uh, Death Bite helps him because it, Death Bite with Whirlwind, Patron, and Armorsmith can win him that fatigue game. Yeah. So he does need that, you know, on board and at least one Death Bite locked in, ready to go for the turn he wants to create all the armor and hopefully, you know, outlast the mage at that point. This is getting more interesting by a minute. So uh, Pavel has that Alexstrasza to to limit uh, the health of RDU, I uh, reduce the health to 15. But there's uh, armor still there, so um, he needs a bit more damage. He needs to get that armor down. At the moment, he only has what, like 12. He needs a frostbolt at least. Yeah, and the thing here as well is like this is where the the patron matchup shows versus the freeze mage is that but it, i mean what turn are we on turn nine now going into turn nine for the patron warrior next turn is that adu's only gained six armor this whole game or at least only sitting on six armor at the moment so this is why the freeze mage can win this matchup because suddenly you know to he, although he doesn't have all the bursts we can see in hand adu doesn't know that because this is now scary 21 health is not a lot when a mage has played emperor and has alex Straza yeah. on board Exactly. Belch is going to do some work, though, I think. Uh, well, there is a death spot as well, finally. So, Ardy will be able to replace the weapon if he wants it, but he doesn't have the second armor smith yet. And uh, apparently, Acolyte can, can be used. And um, Pavel went for, for Alexstrasza instead of just uh, trying to give Ardy cards, when, which in this case would probably benefit Ardy more than Pavel. They are far away from fatigue yet. Yeah, and the thing is, um, as, when when you see the Alex Trouser come down, th suddenly the game changes to okay, maybe this won't go to fatigue, because for all I you knows, there's fireball, fireball, frostball, ice lance with a Falnos in hand, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and then and then a follow up pyroblast, like you know that that's a lot of damage that unless I you pulls a big AOE out. He's not going to be able to armor up through, especially with freezing the frothing, because as we can see, Alex Trouser is a threat in, in herself. It is. And can it connect to face this turn? There is a Fireball and Blizzard, for example, but then there is Armor Smith as well. But if you think about it, if Alex Straza connects for 8, that's great for Pavel. Yeah. And as I said, Pavel might well be running a Pyroblast in this deck, which is, you know, you can't really underestimate just 10 damage burst um, straight out of hand. So uh, the Alex is sticking on the ball to pretty pretty scary for IDU because he still doesn't have an answer and I, uh, I think Pavel knows that because yeah. it, just, it, it just would be dead, it just would have been executed, there's no reason you would try and like mess about and try and like, oh, it's fine that 8-8 being alive on the board, you know, like it's no problem. Pavel, Pavel's just saying like, you cannot deal with my dragon, I will give you one more turn to try. And RDU actually has an answer, um, 
Gromash can charge into that Alexstrasza. Yeah. I think he has to. So now what either you's doing is saying, Alexstrasza's put me to 15. Um, you know, we've seen a Fireball out of the Mage, we've seen an Ice Lance. So there's, you know, there's some damage that he's not getting back, uh, most likely. And with a second armor smith and some more minions, I'm going to just start buffing my armor back up and back up and back up and just keep going. And even this Frothing Berserker now requires some form of answer because it's, you know, it's only got one health, but it's got 16 attack, which is it's, pretty scary. It's so funny that we we had some action, but now we're back to the fatigue plan, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's like, oh, oh, it got excited for a moment, but oh, wait, no, yeah. They just need to draw cards and uh, get to fatigue and then see who has more armor or life. Yeah, this is pretty okay. You know, it's a good blizzard, although it gave him uh, three armor. It did clear the board, which is pretty reasonable. And uh, Pavel's still got, you know, the warrior's only on what? He's on 28. It's not horrendous. It's still doable and there's still Antonidas in the deck, right? Yeah, you can still so get those extra fireballs, unless you have, like, you, you can have a Pyroblast, you can have um, Maligus even, depending on what you choose. And uh, I would not be surprised if Pablo runs Maligus, because we've seen some interesting deck building in his uh, Reno lock, so, you know, customized Freeze Mage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's, it's it's likely, definitely, and um, RDU's pretty much going to be reliant on this Grim Patron Armorsmith to be able to... Uh, build up enough armor to see through this, but Pavel's now got his second Frostbolt. So that's pretty good in itself. He really does now, I mean, he's probably just thinking to himself, C come on Antonidas, where are you? Because th that would be really key, because if he, he, he almost always fairly certain there's still no second Execute in Adu's hand, because he had to run Grom into the Alexstrasza. Obviously the more turns that go on, that becomes more likely to have the Execute, but imagine if like that turn he could play Antonidas, then Frostbolt, the warrior. Uh, you know, Frostball Ice Lines, and suddenly you just think, right, you know, chain fireballs for days. Yeah, there is a Pyroblast for Pavel, but overall, I think Pavel is in a, in a great spot. He just has to patiently, uh, well, wait, or just kill. Oh, he has to patiently Pyroblast him in the face. <laughs> that's, that's something you can absolutely do, right? This armor is not going anywhere, so you can just Pyroblast. Like, this turn is not threatening at all. Like, Loot Hoarder is fine. Pavel is saying just, yeah, sure, draw a card. You will start getting fatigue damage uh, earlier, so I will be able to. You you are going to deal damage to yourself with that fatigue. Yeah, and and bear in mind, there's still. I mean, look at Pavel's health. <laughs> He's not under any threat, and I, Pavel knows Grom's gone, and there's no burst coming at all. And he has Frostnova Doomsayer, so when the patron board does come down for the second time, Frostnova Doomsayer is an option to just say nope, you know. And then once that's hit then how does the warrior win, especially when they feel like they're behind on fatigue a little bit, and the mage still has plenty of burst potential, and Antonidas still hasn't been killed. There is still a second execute, right? There, I think there is a second execute, yeah. yeah he, he He's only executed, um... Oh my god, what did he execute? Uh, Torison. Yeah, that was it. He, he's only used one, I believe, so there's still an execute somewhere, but my, the worry for RDU now is, is the turn where Pavel plays Antonidas and then says, like, Frostbolt Ice Lance, is that too much damage? You know, it, is that already too much? So you it kill the Antonidas, but then there's, you've just been Frostbolt Ice Lance, so a weapon's unusable, and then you get two Fireballs plus anything else that's still in the deck. Yeah, and uh, Pablo is just patiently throwing those fireballs, emptying his hand. He is uh, in a great position. RDU, though, can uh, play Armorsmith and Patron. This might be the best turn he gets uh, with as much armor as possible on this very moment. So, uh, yeah. is he going to go for the green Patron, though? He will get one whirlwind effect. I think he has to because in playing the Armorsmith, he's committed to this play. If he didn't, then, you know. Suddenly, like Frostbolt ping, the armor smith gains two armor. Because you know, that's just it's just not enough, is it? Like, you need more, you need like probably 10 plus armor from this armor smith to be able to feel like it's done a good enough job in this match. What do you think about slam? Like, uh, RDU could have slammed unstable goal, um, or he can still do it, and oh no, he can't because he armor this, up. Yeah, this is gonna get locked down pretty hard by the um. By the Frost Nova, and as we said earlier, the, the perks of Doomsayer in this matchup is that it doesn't damage any of the minions it kills, it just kills them. Unless, so there's going to be no additional armor unless... Unless execute, oh. and there's two, there are two draws to do it. Uh, he can still slam the Doomsayer and try to get it. 
Yeah, he does have options, and let's be honest, I think at this point he has to do it. This is, I think the game is decided on this turn. Well, actually, he either gets execute or he doesn't. With the weapon attack, if he gets a second inner rage. Yeah, now he has it. With Death Spite and um, an Inner Rage, he will be able to yeah. kill the, the Doomsayer. That was pretty huge. That Doomsayer could have decided the game. He does clear it off uh, and be able to gain some armor and guard the board. Flame Strike is going to uh, gain RDU 4 additional armor, but again, is 4 enough when there's still a heal bot. There's still Antonidas to be drawn. All your patrons are gone, and looking at RDU, uh, RDU's hand, it's definitely looking pretty grim. I believe RDU still has Dr. Boom in the deck. There is an Antonidas, though. Um, but you still want to flame strike this board first, and then just cycle your cards. And uh, the best part for Pavel is that if you flame strikes this, um, he is not under any threat next turn. You could just go with Antonidas and uh, just play Iceland's and Frostbolt. If there is, even if there is Doctor Boom, he still will have a way to just Iceland's Boom and um, yeah. get the fireballs. Yeah, with with Iceland's and Frostbolt as well. Um, the, the boom bots are the only things that can kill uh, Antonidas, unless there's that execute that's uh, you know surely going to come from somewhere. And downloads for the spell power as well. Yeah, right now, even if there's an execute for RDU, it, I, I don't think it matters. This is enough damage to, to finish him off with the Thalmas, I believe. So seven, 7 damage now, putting RDU on, what, 22? And yeah. uh, with the 22, you will have Thalmas double fireball, which is... Um, 14 and then fatigue damage will be pretty pretty fast yeah i think you can definitely pressure him but i think either you just has to slam antonidas right huh if he slams his own acolyte no, how does he he... That, it, so with this he can also replace the weapon and still damage antonidas so he's trying to increase oh, yeah, the chance true. to get uh execute yeah of course he sells the mana for the... yeah he's only on two mana though right yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can still, uh, he can still. Oh wait, no, he will not yeah, be. Able he to couldn't have fiery war axe and execute. So oh, right, that's uh, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just. I mean, maybe we missed something, and he's already used an execute. I don't know, but that seemed uh, like it was a little bit rough. And this is just going to be game. Yeah, that's right, and uh, it's going to be match as well. Pavel just uh, defeating are you three to zero? Uh, really impressive. Finish. Uh, one to last cards. I still believe there is an execute. Oh, there's there. execute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were right. The second execute's still there. So, with three fireballs, there's no way to armor up past this with nothing else in hand that can generate armor. Um, is Doctor Boom still the best play? <laughs> is, it the, <laughs> is the winning play? Yeah. Zardy, no. you just seen how good he's been. What's hard to snipe for the uh, if they can kill Antonidas? Yeah, that's that's at least something. Yeah, and they didn't snipe it because Execute glowed green, so uh, it's playable. The last card for you is a Dread Corsair, so he is playing two. Yeah, right. and that's going to be uh, the game. Wow. Pretty, pretty crazy set, actually. It's actually, yeah, the set was good, but uh, I think the last game was really fun. <laughs> it's like, it always um, cheats you in a way that you, you're thinking, hey, this match is going to fatigue. Like. This is always going to fatigue. And then su suddenly in the middle, there's some minion fighting. And you're like, oh, wait, maybe it'll actually end before fatigue. But then, like, oh, everything dies. Nope. And you still go to fatigue. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting, though, because like, it really shows that the Freeze Mage and Patron Warrior matchup is a little bit more uh, reasonable for the Freeze Mage than uh, the Control Warrior matchup. Because unless you, you almost need to guarantee the um, like double whirlwind onto a big board or double armor smith whirlwind with patrons or something you know, like a ridiculous sum of armor uh, to really get through that but having to deal with the uh, emperor in the way that uh, Adiyu had to like I think hurt him quite a lot because that that combined with the second execute being so deep in his deck is definitely an uphill climb for Adiyu after that yeah absolutely all right, guys, so that was the uh, second match of the day. Uh, we are starting, um, well, day two today, Group B. Uh, next match is going to be Eco versus Pavel. This is the winner's match. So whoever wins that is going to advance to the to the last day, um, to the playoffs. And then after that, we'll have the loser's match, which will be Hoi versus uh, RDU. And uh, the loser of that is going to be eliminated. So some more Harson for you today, for sure. You're watching Harson Champions League. Stay tuned for more Harson with us after a short break.